okay so in our devops uh, training sessions the, the second topic which are going which we are going to cover today is devops and cloud basically we will uh, we will put more focus on cloud computing in today's lecture okay so let me start okay so in past lecture we already know what is devops why devops needed uh, what are the basic skill sets sets should you you should have to be a devops engineer right how it wrap uh, sp sped up the uh, overall software life life cycle uh, software development life cycle right so today uh, okay so today what we will talk like devops is a software let's let's again start like devops is a software engineering practice that suited to cloud computing okay in a devops environment developers collaborate with it operations and other teams and devops goes beyond continuous integration and continuous delivery to enable near instantaneous development of product and services in the cloud so what we can say like today in today's era uh, not just cloud computing is boom but because of cloud computing devops also uh, devops domain also got boom because uh, because of devops tools only you will able to use your cloud computing services in more if more efficient manner and you will automate all those stuff using devops tools and technology right so definitely devops is now just not about continuous integration and continuous delivery but you can near you can definitely create a instances or infrastructure in a near time in a near time and you can do a deployment of your products uh and services in the cloud because uh, because of because of that i would say devops and cloud uh nowadays works in works with works together by having hands in hand right so when devops teams works in the cloud they enjoy easier access to scalable hardware resources that can help build test and deploy new updates and offering more quickly right so what it does mean like uh if you have infrastructure uh that is managed by you so def definitely devops will have to will have a extra burden on that particular team that they will have to manage hardware plus they will have to uh, deploy application app automate op application on that hardware but because of cloud it become very easy easier for a devops team to access scalable hardware like uh, like definitely we'll go into deep like how we can uh, scale hardware and descale hardware in a cloud because that is why cloud got boom nowadays right also the popularity of cloud application delivery has led to widespread adoption of devops methods because they are well suited to the rapid ongoing processes that are key benefit to cloud operations so because of devops tools uh, cloud application delivery also uh, got faster right and whatever cloud operations operations we do uh, those got automated those got easily uh, done because of devops tools right so again i am telling like uh, let's suppose if you are if you don't have a cloud uh, in your product so what will happen like uh, you will have to first set up infrastructure then you'll have to have a different it operations team just to manage that infrastructure uh even if you able to scale that infrastructure it is not easy to descale that infrastructure because it it will be hardware and you will have to uh you will have to maintain in that way only like it is not that easy to scale that infrastructure remove racks from your infrastructure and scale it down that's not easy so definitely it will create a kiosk and it will definitely it will uh make your task tedious uh, instead of just focusing on software life cycle uh, software development life cycle delivery you will have to uh, put your efforts into infrastructure as well so because of that only in a cloud computing however the application stack is likely to continue changing after its initial deployment so because of that only many of the organization many of the startups move to uh, cloud computing like they want to quick start their application right they want to go live within no period of time like that so they so no startup will go for creating infrastructure on their premise ma manage it invest big amounts in that infrastructure and then deploy your application they will definitely go for a, a public clouds like aws azure gcp like that so and this is not just the one part the another part is like because of you don't have to manage any hardware and already clouds will be giving all you uh, 
clouds will be given so much of features to you like you can scale up your hardware you can scale down your har hardware in a minimum period of time so you can continuously change your hardware in a run time uh, you can test your application with various type of infrastructure like nowadays uh, containerization is booming right so now if you have started with uh, normal vms and you want to go to uh, kubernetes and container orchestration tools so definitely because of these clouds it is so easy like you can get those services from cloud and deploy the application test it if it suits you will directly move to that uh, infrastructure part like from normal vm structure to uh, containerization tool structure right so a devops team can be a more efficient as well as uh multiple multidisciplinary team can advantage can take advantage of virtualization and containers as i said again so multidisciplinary team can take advantage of virtualization and containerization in a cloud to develop and test applications in identical environments simultaneously and provision additional resources as needed so this is the same thing which i have discussed right now like you can continuously change your infrastructure uh, like uh, you can do testing if like if you like that infrastructure you can directly move to that infrastructure without hesitating or without uh, maintaining any infrastructure at your end okay so in fact devops best practices are becoming essential to success of cloud application development especially for there are three types of cloud delivery services one is infrastructure as a service then platform as a service and software as a service so so because of these services applications are deployed in ongoing continuous cycles organizations per per pursuing new saas delivery require uh, like let me reframe it okay so because of uh, that particular uh, type of the cloud delivery models like uh, platform as a service infrastructure as a service and uh, software as a service organizations are easily able to choose one of the service according to their need they can uh, develop their application they can deploy their application and go live within no time so this is how uh, devops and cloud computing are booming together i would say okay so any doubt so far right now like you have any doubt in devops and uh, cloud like just now we are just talking about how devops is getting beneficial uh, in a domain of cloud computing right so anyone have anyone have uh, is having a doubt uh, clear rahul until now okay okay i hope you getting my points right what i am trying to explain it here yeah yes rahul okay so as from in our last session we discussed about in a devops only there are so many roles like right uh, build and release engineer is there then cloud engineer is there then cloud ops is there so that is nothing but this like using devops tools you will uh, able to use cloud services efficiently for your organization right right so this is why uh, it is the need it is the basic skill set uh it is a need of devops engineer that he or she should have at least knowledge of uh, at least a knowledge of any cloud like any private or a public cloud especially public cloud because almost 95% i would say uh, organizations are using public cloud only because of they don't they don't need to manage any infrastructure at their end they they will just simply uh, use cloud services through some software or uh, through some software or, or some mobile application through the browser right and uh rest devops tools can be easily fit into those services like to deploy it let's just take example of terraform tool it is one of the devops tool right infrastructure as a code so if you want to create a infrastructure in aws so so you can easily use a terraform with those cl uh, cloud aws cloud apis to create infrastructure you don't even you don't need to go on a, a ui of that aws cloud and select uh, what service you want what you want to create like that so this is how uh, devops and cloud are working together to work more efficiently in terms of infrastructure so we are not just bound to continuous integration and continuous delivery in a devops but it is now uh, it is now far more than that like 
uh, we can create infrastructure in a runtime uh, because of the cloud computing and its services. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Okay. So I would say like in just in just 2020, global DevOps market size was valued at 6.78 billion US dollars, and it is projected to reach 57.90 billion US dollars by 2030. So, and what CAGR it is giving that is 24.2 percent from 2021 to 2030. Now you can see the potential of this domain. Like, if you are in this domain, there is no uh, go back for you, right? Definitely, uh, you will have a uh, work in this domain, uh, and almost every startup, like whatever startup comes in day by day, they are start they are continuous. They have started using cloud only to go live within no time. Like let's just take example of uh, Netflix. Whatever Netflix you, you are using uh, right now, it is totally based on AWS cloud. So because of that only they are able to scale up and scale down according to the, according to the load uh, in, in, in their infrastructure. So this is how I can say this is there is a very, very, very big DevOps market and what you are learning Definitely, it will uh, take you to some other another level. I would say. I hope uh, you are getting my point. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Not just about DevOps, but in uh, in terms of public cloud market. So uh, by 2023, there will be a revenue of 525.60 billion US dollars in this in this in this fiscal year of 2023 uh, 2023 and it is expected to grow at a CAGR of 13 dot 18 81 percent uh, from 2023 to 2007 2027 and by 2027 the market volume of just the public cloud will be uh, 881.80 billion US dollars right and if you don't know just just the AWS cloud is holding almost 13% of this whole market. 13%. It is it is a bigger figure, I would say. 13% of whole market, public cloud market. Uh, this data are correct. Like I have taken it from statista.com. Uh, so there you will find this data. So they keep the data. They just capture the data like for we for every IT domain. So one of the public cloud domain they are having, they have given this data like. And they are they are saying AWS itself is having 13% market share in the public cloud. Uh, I would say so. Definitely, you don't need to learn each and every cloud. Uh, it's not like you should learn AWS, Azure, GCP, Alibaba is there. Then Digital Ocean is there. Nowadays, so many clouds are coming. Right, you might know, but you just have to be expertise in only one cloud. You just stick to that cloud. You should be ex that expertise. Anyone, whatever ask you, you should able to do that uh, in that in that cloud. So as I said, if it's a 13% of market share is captured by AWS only, so why not start with AWS only like from uh, like that? So it's on you what you want to choose in terms of cloud uh, uh, throughout your career. Like I have to choose uh, AWS and Azure for myself. Like I have started like my career started with AWS only. So like that you will have to be stick to at least one of the cloud. Definitely again the sentence I would say I would say like jack of all trades and master of none, but it's not like that. You have to be master at least for one tool or at least for one cloud. You got my point all of, right. Yes, Rahul. Okay. So, so now we got to know uh, like from previous lecture we talked about we discussed about devops uh, now we are going to learn about cloud computing now we know uh, how devops and cloud computing works together uh, right to have an efficient uh, way of working in terms of software development life cycle right so now today's agenda is all about uh, to know about basics of cloud computing then how cloud computing evolved, uh, virtualization and cloud computing, uh, components of cloud computing, types of cloud, and 
क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग सर्विस डिलीवरी मॉडल्स ओके सो लेट मी स्टार्ट विथ फर्स्ट सो लेट सपोज सूर्या यू हैव स्टार्टेड योर ओन कंपनी just we are just thinking hypothetically but definitely in future you will start your own company and you want to go live uh, uh, as you got investors you have developers you started developing your application and you want to go live uh, within a uh, lesser period of time right so and you have some guy yeah. like girish who is market expert he who is it enthusiast who is technology enthusiast he that he knows what to choose if he want to go faster uh, on internet right so surya you will ask here is like uh, how we can uh, uh, set up our application right so the first approach will be like you will be creating your infrastructure you will invest some amount in infrastructure first once your infrastructure is ready then you will go to then you will de- you will be deploying your application right definitely it will add more time to go live right right surya so yeah. what so what yeah. girish suggesting you like uh, he did research he got to know like there is a public cloud in market which they which are giving us cloud services and we don't need to set up an infrastructure on premise or or somewhere else we can simply uh, use their cloud services to deploy our application so girish will girish going to suggest to like yeah let's go with public cloud and and that is how cloud comes in in your organization uh, let's take hypothetically you started working on aws uh, you know the application needs you know the infrastructure will be needed you just uh, you just create an infrastructure on that aws cloud and you are paying as you are using like on hourly basis it's not like if you if you have created your own infrastructure definitely it could have burden like you really don't know like how much load you are going to get in a first time right and it, it is going to increase gradually by the time like how your application is de- getting demand in the market right but because of public cloud now you can gradually your infrastructure and you can pay only for that part that you are using right so that is this is how giris help you in setting book setting up uh, and deploying your application and go live in a faster way right surya so uh, so what is cloud so now you already know like what i said uh, i'm just framing in one definition like cloud is the model where users have a convenient and on demand access to shared pool of resources such as servers storage and applications over the internet okay so users don't have a control of underlying hardware infrastructure that is owned by that cloud provider only okay they they will have access to those services and resources using some application uh or some device uh, or 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 on the web browser just think now aws cloud now how you are accessing aws cloud you have some url you are accessing it through web browser that is the one of the application is running you are accessing 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 that application on a web browser you are simply choosing service you want like let's you want to create some instance so you are choosing their ec2 uh, elastic cloud service where you can create a instances for your application right you are getting my point right so you can now think like cloud computing is nothing but uh, infrastructure server storage applications are kept somewhere and you are just accessing them over the internet they are connecting to you connected to you through internet and you are using their services through some application on web browser i hope all of you got the point like what is cloud and what is cloud computing basically yeah yes rahul understood okay. okay so surya you are the entrepreneur of your company so you know like how like how you are saving uh, not just money but time uh, not just money but time but also resources like if if you did not listen to girish to go on public cloud and if you if you could have set up infrastructure in your comp- within your organization definitely you you will you could have to uh, hire a, a hire a extra team just to manage those resources right not just that you you could have to purchase all those infrastructure like storage servers and applications rack and everything right and also it could have take more time to go live right 
but Giris just solved your problem, all this problem. Uh, he just suggested you public cloud and you went ahead with that. So same is being happening in our industry. Like many of the startups, you will find many of the startups never will have their infrastructure. They will start simply using AWS, Azure, and GCP according to their con in convenience, but according to their expertise. You got my point, right guys? Hello? Yeah, yes, Rahul. So, I like, uh, yes, Surya. In the, in the one setup only, they are offering us uh, multiple things. Yeah, multiple just things. Just by paying one thing. Right. And you just have to pay on demand, like uh, whatever service you accessing, whatever service you are using, you will be paid for that service on hourly basis only. Once you stop that service, once you stop using of that service, they will not charge you, right? But in case yeah. of if, if you could have an infrastructure on at your end, definitely, even if you're not using still, that will be a burden for you. That will be extra yeah. overhead cost for you to just to manage an infrastructure, even if you're not using, right? It's yeah. not, yeah. right? It's, it is a one of the one aspect. Another aspect is like scalability. Uh, you don't know how much traffic and how much load is going to come on your application, like after you go live, right? In case of, uh, uh, your infrastructure setup definitely you would have to buy a uh, extra infrastructure because of you don't know like how much load is going to come and you will have to keep extra in your premises but because of public cloud uh, you can scale up in a runtime as soon as you come to know like load is going to come definitely you could have created new infrastructure or new instances from public cloud you 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 would have add that to your infrastructure and you started using it and again as soon as load comes down definitely you you could have discal your infrastructure in public cloud so this is another uh, feature is being pro provided because of the cloud public cloud i would say public cloud but the overall cloud like okay uh, Okay, so evolution of computing, you can see like, uh, uh, does anyone know like when mainframe computers came in? Like, do you know the year? Anyone know the year? The main the year of mainframe com mainframe computers? Mm, no, Rahul, but uh, mainframe was uh, introduced by IBM. You right. know that mainly for the banking servers, huge. Uh, amount of data is going to be stored in that so those servers and uh, to maintain this uh, securely custom information and bank account details payment details and all right 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 so so the year so the year was like I'll not exactly but year was 1950 only so from 1950 only this computer world started booming i would say like from 1950 onwards like fame, mainframe computers came in then then uh, then in the era of 1960 to 1950 to 1960 many computers came in people by the 1970 people started using personal computers like a uh, small computers then client server architecture came in client server architecture mean like uh, up to pcs there was no internet right uh, that internet like thing right up up to pcs Inter when triple w came in that is by 1970 so that time only client server architecture came in like uh, there were a server there were started using batch processing of uh, batch processing uh, not a batch processing is the right example though, but the client now you might know the what is client server architecture there will be a servers placed in client will be used uh, those servers uh, for some work and that's it and then by 1970 Triple W, that is internet came in, that web technology came in. By your 2000, your personal computers, your OSS uh, got uh, developed in a drastic way. And by the 2000, you started using mobile, right? Like you might know in India when when it when mobile came in, like Reliance, right? So before that there was a pager, but by 2000 in India itself there were a mobile. Uh, there was a mobile with people, right? Reliance uh, launched their uh, mobile phones, right? And from there it evolved to your Android, your Apple phone, your Kai OS, that mobile computing came in. And 
by the 2007 and 2017 there were application service providers like there were application already placed you you just started using that let's take example of google engine it's a application service provider like google gave your application like google engine on internet you just using it to search anything you want right and by the 2007 cloud computing by the 2007 cloud computing started booming like i i just remember the year of it amazon that is 2007 i guess uh, they launch aws cloud okay so this is how uh, cloud computing came in and if you uh, if you want to go to the basic of cloud computing like you can think like if if anyone might know about does anyone know about storage attached networks san no so storage attached attached networks are nothing but you are accessing some storage over the internet you got my point storage attached networks right storage uh, the disk are placed somewhere and you are uh, pushing data uh, writing data and reading data uh, on that disk through internet by sitting in another location you got my point right now right so to i hope everyone is getting what is san like i am just giving you basic definition of san but it is more than that san i would say i will not go into deep for us and i just want to give an example what is storage attached network hello yeah got it okay so now you can think cloud computing cloud computing that way only like storage attached networks so definitely in a cloud as well, also there is a data centers there are storage place right and you are accessing that storage over the internet right so you can see you can think in that way only like i guess rocket space was the first company who launched the storage attached network service from university university of massachusetts that i remember uh, i'm not right but definitely that that is the one that rocket space was the company who launch the service called storage attached network and later it started evolve like we are human and we gradually evolve right we start with something and we go deeper into that right so this is how cloud computing came in and this is the evolution of cloud computing okay so now coming to the main part of cloud computing that is virtualization okay Does anyone know about virtualization? What is virtualization? So, like uh, we are using the whole machine on top of one, mm -hmm. right? Oh yes, right. Virtual. Have okay. So, Surya, have you ever used it? Yeah, yeah. In our current organizations, uh, we are using the VMs. Okay, okay. And in your personal computers, have you ever? set up that virtual machine yeah recently we have set up this ubuntu server on the oracle virtual box so like uh, in the same system like on through oracle virtual box uh, we are accessing this ubuntu server locally okay 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 send to right. okay okay so you are right surya so virtualization is the process of creating virtual machines or replicas of computing resources so just think of this definition uh, the process of creating virtual machines or replicas of computing resources now think it like you have uh, 100 tb of storage and you have 128 gb of ram so if you are able to create virtual machines using that resource not a single machine but a n number of machine with some combination of storage not just storage cpu not just storage and ram but there will be cpu also like let's take example there is a 100 tb of storage 128 gb of ram and there are almost uh, uh 32 64 128 okay 120 of 120 of cpu so this is the resource you have got so you it is not like you will be creating only one machine you can create several virtual machines with with the use of that hardware and resource right so this is nothing but you are doing virtualization of that resource okay and as you mention um, as you mention 
uh, Surya, that you have used Oracle Virtual Box, right, to create to install Ubuntu on your PC. So yeah, so you can think that Oracle Virtual Box is nothing but some hypervisor. So hypervisor is the software. Okay, so hypervisor is the software uh, which is used to divide your physical server that is resources that I, I said 128 GB of RAM, uh, 128 C cores, 128 CPU cores and 100 TB of data. So to divide that resources, uh, uh, there is a software called hypervisor that is being used to create a virtual n number of virtual machines on that hardware. So you are getting my point, all of you. What is hypervisor? What is virtualization? And what are what is yeah. virtual machines? Right? Hello? Yes, Rahul. Yeah. Okay. So there are two hypervisors, type one hypervisor and type two hypervisor. So just now what we talked about Oracle virtual box, it comes under type two hypervisor. You can see this diagram. Uh, here you can see Microsoft virtual, virtual PC. So what it is doing like there is a physical machine hardware. Hardware nothing but your resources on top of that there is one OS. Let's just take an example of your PC, your laptop. So your laptop is having uh, four core and 16 GB of RAM and 500 GB of SSD, right? So this is your hardware physical machine. OK, on on that you have might have Windows or Linux or Mac OS, right? So this is your laptop. Now you are adding virtual box. You are installing virtual box in your uh, laptop. So that is the type two hypervisor and, and on, on the virtual virtual box. You are running another OS. Let's suppose there is a Windows in your laptop and you want to run Ubuntu. So virtual PC or virtual box will act as a type two hypervisor software to create a virtual machine on your laptop. So same comes with your uh, actual cloud hardware, actual data centers. So you might have seen data centers in data center. What you said, same resources. Uh, there will be a disk. There will be racks. In racks, there will be a disk uh, storage disk. There will be a RAM. There will be a CPU. So that will be your physical server, physical hardware, and you will be using type one hypervisor like VMware is uh, VMware vSphere is widely used then Microsoft Cypher V is wi widely used as a type one hypervisor to create a virtual machines on that. Uh, now let's forget about type two hypervisor. Let's just think of type one hypervisor and your AWS cloud. So in 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 you in your past experience, if you ever uh, uh, any ever created an instance on AWS that is nothing but there is a physical server, physical hardware place somewhere in a data centers that that is why you were able to see lots of reasons over there, right? Not Virginia, uh, Oregon region, Mumbai region, Asia specific, Asia, Asia Pacific regions, uh, right? So those are physical hardwares and AWS is also using some kind of type one hyper or like I, I just remember that is that can be that must be a Zen, but I'm not sure, but they, they are using type one hypervisor and they have APIs to connect with type uh, type one hypervisor and then from UI you are creating instance. So that instance is getting created as a virtual machine on some of the physical hardware in that particular region or in that particular data centers. You all are getting my point, right? What is virtualization? What is virtual machines? What is hypervisor? Hello? Yeah, yeah Rahul, got it. And uh, you are able to distinguish things right now, right? You are thinking, taking, you have taken example of your PC. Now you are comparing it with your AWS cloud or any any other cloud. You you are able to compare it, right? Working it same, right? Just the uh, yeah. You got my point. Yeah, I got it. So on the same hardware, uh, multi using multiple OSs. Right, using hypervisor. Okay, okay. So, so virtualization is the process of creating virtual machines or replicas of computer resources. The server administrator uses a software application called hypervisor to divide your physical server, that is hardware, uh, into several isolated virtual machines, uh, virtual environments called virtual machines, 
instances or emulations with different operating systems such as linux microsoft windows solaris and so on now you are getting my point have you if you have heard about instance in in the domain of aws like ec2 instance so that is nothing but virtual machine if you go in azure cloud they say virtual machine as virtual machine only right emulation is the traditional term is being used from uh, la from uh, like from oh, past days only like past years they are we are using emulations emulators but nowadays instances is booming because of aws and vms virtual machines are booming because of azure and your vmware okay <clears throat> so virtualization supports running of multiple virtual machines on a single physical machine and it is one of the fundamental elements or building block of your cloud computing you are getting my point why i am trying to teach you about virtualization because it is the foundation i would say of your cloud cloud computing what you do in cloud computing you are creating multiple virtual machines that is done because of this virtualization technologies only right right surya girish uh, krishna datta yeah yeah yes rahul <laughs> okay just the thing cloud yeah, computing yeah. yeah so just the thing cloud computing takes virtualization to next level by providing load based provisioning and deprovisioning of computing resources self service portals and pay per use billing so whatever we discussed till now same i am again telling you cloud computing taking virtualization to next level whether where you can do scaling your infra descale your infra uh, you will be uh, having pay per use only pay per use only uh, also you will be having self service through some application on a web browser you getting my point that is why i am saying cloud virtualization is the foundation of cloud any cloud computing you got my point okay any doubt so far uh, in in these terminologies virtual machines hypervisor uh, physical server virtualization It's clear uh, uh, okay so even if in interview if anyone ask you uh, what is virtualization now you will able to definitely you will come across such interview questions where you will be asking what is virtual machine <coughs> right so now you will know uh, what is virtual machine how it is created what it help what helps to create virtual machines on physical server that is hypervisor right if you want to go into the of that so i would suggest you guys to uh, learn from a book called uh, called black book by willy india publications black book on cloud computing one of the finest book i would say like if you want to go into basic of this uh, virtualization like they will tell you there are so many type of virtualizations available uh, para virtualization full virtualization uh, partly virtualization so whatever we talking about is virtual pc virtual box that is para virtualization like there will be os again there will be another os uh, fully virtualization your os part uh, partly virtualization your containers whatever you are running uh, that is again another type of virtualization so i would suggest you to uh, if you want to go into deeper for virtualization itself so uh you can refer that book black book of cloud computing uh black book of cloud computing by will india publications next topic is components of cloud there are three component client cloud network and cloud api we already talked about this right uh we talked about uh there will be a software interface you that you will be accessing over the internet in a through a browser that is nothing but uh there will be a right to access those cloud services and you will be a end user that if you want to use those cloud services you will have to get access of those uh, software interface uh, over the internet through web browser simply let's take example of aws only like how you access it like 
they have provided url on internet you just go there you create your account it and you start simply uh using those services on your own so it's kind of self service and you are the client then cloud network uh so cloud network primarily enables a cloud computing infrastructure solution uh and its associated components and uh and external users to communicate with each other so you can uh think in this way okay so let's take an example of google drive we google drive or dropbox okay so what it what it gives you it gives you storage as a service right storage as a service like there uh, you will have a account on google drive uh, there is a common account for all google services so you definitely you can access google drive you get some uh, free storage that is around 17 gb uh, you upload files you download files uh, over the internet through browser uh, like chrome let's suppose they have provided the application over the internet only google drive is the link so think in that way same here is the cloud network so cloud network it's a broader perspective like uh, there are there is a infrastructure uh, uh, that is data center you are a client there will be a software and in the data center there will be a cloud services so, so these four components are connected to each other they will able to communicate to each other through cloud network so that is nothing but your simple internet you got my point right remote to connect with cloud to use cloud services remote user should have internet first then only he or she will able to access the application or device uh, provided by that cloud third party cloud provider once he or she will get access to that application over the internet uh, he or she will start using cloud services that are developed by that cloud provider and will be stored in the infrastructure at back end so these all entities are connected over the internet so this is nothing but the cloud network okay cloud api you any doubt so far in cloud network and client no 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 okay so now third point is third part is cloud api so again we discuss about four components client application infrastructure and cloud services right so to to have communication between uh, application and and the actual cloud services there must be some apis right then only we will be able to call those services right rest apis will be there so those are nothing but cloud apis so when cloud provider creates an application or a service they also create a apis so that other software can communicate with the with that software or a service you are getting my point any doubt in cloud api hello no rahul you are clear i hope it is uh, like it's not like definitely we will have hands on when when we will talk about aws but currently we are just going through basics uh, i just want to to let you know guys like what exactly cloud computing is right so i hope yeah. it's not kind of boring like uh, <laughs> hello yeah okay not boring rahul yeah it's okay. good okay. okay okay so when a cloud provider creates an application or a service they also create apis so that other software can communicate with that software or service the components of an api ecosystem include assets apis developers software and end users assets information to be shared internally or externally with end users apis connects to those assets so assets assets are nothing but services think services like storage cpu ram and so many services are there nowadays right so those are assets okay and you want to connect external user and internal user to those assets so definitely we will have apis right uh then definitely then you will have a developer to create one application just to use those api to share asset 
to your end user okay developer develops that application or software then the four component will be software let's think of aws ui page console and end user you are the one you are the devops engineer you are going to use those services to uh, create a infrastructure for your application so these are the components of cloud api assets apis developers softwares and end users any doubt so far in these terminologies no rahul we are clear okay okay so uh, i am just giving you hint like many of the times you will you might have seen oh that particular reason is down in aws most of the north north version is the one of reason gets down right so you see like there there is a api failure on the aws console for that north reason like you were not able to create any ec2 instance you are not able to see you were created an instance you might have seen that problem if you are work in a uh devops so man like right so so that failure is nothing but the api that api itself is failing that is why it is not able to connect it is not able to show you what instances you are created so then aws works on that it takes many of time it takes time to uh make that aws service up and running like you you will see those so that nothing but the cloud apis are filling over there you got my point i will show you that picture uh, when we will talk about aws no so i will again we will take this topic like as a small part of this topic like what are the apis over there like how it it fills okay so now type of clouds we are coming to type of clouds so there are four types of clouds private cloud public cloud hybrid cloud and community cloud private cloud you already know Exuria, you are the entrepreneur. You wanted to go live, right? But you thought of having infrastructure on your in within your organization. That thought is nothing but you are creating a private cloud. You are creating a data center. Still, there are so many organizations in the world. They are having uh, their own data centers. One of example I would say Reliance Geo is having their own data centers. Like they don't use public cloud. They have their data centers uh, and. they are using a uh, cloud application to uh, work with those data centers like like that so there are the things so private cloud is nothing but usually it usually reside behind a firewall and are utilized by single organization uh, and it will be uh, situated within the organization or externally managed somewhere but that will be a solely uh, part of the single organization only organization only you got my point right what is private cloud coming to public clouds yeah. coming to public clouds uh, think in that way like you are not managing your own infrastructure using someone else infrastructure you using someone else infrastructure is nothing but infrastructure is set set up somewhere and you are accessing that those cloud services through internet and through some apis so that that infrastructure is nothing but private public cloud uh and that that public cloud can be used by uh, so many organization it, that is not bound to single organization so many organizations can uh use public cloud for their uh, overall development and cloud operations so examples are like aws azure gcp alibaba digital oceans are there right so it is typically have a massive amounts of available space which translates into easy scalability recommended for software development and collaborative projects okay hybrid cloud public cloud I having so many examples uh, take example of your spotify now it is spotify everyone uses spotify to listen music so they are completely using uh, public aws cloud only if you take a example of uh, netflix they are also using aws cloud only if you take example of uh, pin interest so pin interest you know like it is a ms storing uh, website right so so it completely uses public cloud only uh, so these are the one hybrid cloud like hybrid cloud is the combination of public and private cloud so uh, what sometimes what does what organization does like whatever critical information they are having 
whatever sensitive data they are having they keep that data in their private cloud only and they whatever and the application which can be used by end users uh, and the data should be available uh, for everyone so they keep that data into public cloud so that is how many of the organization uses hybrid cloud combination of nothing but public and private cloud example of that i would say nasa like i before uh, preparing for this uh, lecture i just went through what companies what organization which organization uses hybrid cloud so i just found nasa is one of the organization which uses hybrid cloud heavily fourth is community cloud again community cloud is the same as public cloud multiple uh organization can use it just the basic difference between public cloud and community cloud is public cloud it is not like uh, any organization can use uh, whether you are uh, you are from it domain whether you are from uh, manufacturing domain whether you are from any domain you can use public cloud but in case of community cloud it is bound to set of that groups only which are having common uh, field or common industry let's take example of our uh, in many times you know, governments use community cloud like like example i would say government of india they are using community cloud to store our other related data and other related data and again that other data related data is accessed by many of other indian in, uh, by many of our uh, many of other government organizations of our india like is bank uh, banks are using that other data to verify yourself uh, so many are there like that npci using that data so this is one of the example of community cloud i hope you are getting my point like any doubt so far in types of cloud <coughs> hello uh, clear rahul okay so in interview uh, not just an interview i would say uh, but uh, if you someone ask you about on premise cloud so on premise is nothing but your private cloud on premise mean what does it mean on premise mean it is at your own premise only like so on premise and private clouds are same okay so in future uh, when whenever you will start in devops domain will come across like uh, how to do on premise setup of this application how to do public uh, cloud setup of this application so on premise nothing but you will have your own data center and you will be managing you will be having to your own team to manage the data center like that uh, you are getting my point right yes okay uh, the last part of our session is cloud computing service delivery models so now you can see that on premises on premises is nothing but your private cloud you will have to manage everything like uh, networking storage servers virtualization even os middleware runtime application everything you will have to manage it your organization will have to manage it like on on premise uh, but public cloud offers three uh, service delivery models one is infrastructure as a service another is per platform as a service and third one is software as a service so in case of infrastructure as a service you don't need to worry about uh, back end infra like storage servers networks and virtualization you will be simply choose os you want to create a vm on that public cloud and you will be start using it to deploy your application so you just have to manage your application run times middleware like you must be using nginx or apache over there and your actual os okay in infrastructure as a service uh, example i would say any startup nowadays uh, using infrastructure as a service from various clouds like aws azure gcp like that okay uh, next is platform as a service so uh, in a platform as a service even you don't need to worry about virtualization you know you don't need to create instant vm as well they will be providing providing you an application you can use that over the internet you can app, use that application to develop your own application to develop your own software let's take an example of aws gives you 
platform as a service that is elastic beanstalk is the service if you after this lecture you can search about elastic beanstalk what it does like elastic beanstalk it gives you platform to develop your application it gives you python by a uh, python binaries uh, python based platform to create a to develop a python based application java based application like that uh, uh, the uh famous example i would say salesforce.com so what is salesforce so salesforce is the platform given to you right to <laughs> use it in your organization right so this is the this is accessible through internet right last is software as a service in that you don't need to uh, worry about anything uh, software in a software as a service okay so everything will be managed application will be also managed by that uh, third party provider only here you can take example of uh, google so google engine is the software as a service google drive is the software as a service your google apps is the software as a service uh, your google email is the software as a service you are just using their email you don't need to uh, set up infrastructure if you want to create your infra uh, email mail related infrastructure then you will have to have a vms then you will have to set up some samba one of the samba server they used to have a mail configuration and everything will have to set up you can simply use email uh, for your so just sign up and start using it by creating email id for you and credentials for you like that so these are the services uh, provided by the cloud computing like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service okay um okay so that's it for today like we talked about uh how devops and cloud computing working together uh what a basic we talked about basic of cloud computing types of cloud then we talked on this uh, service delivery models as well like that any doubt so far uh no rahul it's clear like it, these are all basics right so yeah right these are basics but definitely it will create a foundation for you to uh, learn main things right we talked about virtualization so when we'll start with our linux session uh, in in the next weekend so you will able to relate it everything like yeah this is how it workings so once you are clear with this basics of cloud computing and basics of linux you are good to go on aws right so this is how we will be founding our course uh, and you will go further like that tools are uh, easy to learn but the main thing is your basics should be clear definitely someone if you start giving interview they, they will not ask you about the tools anyone can answer it they will definitely check on you for basics like do you really know uh, basics of that anything like cloud let's say linux let's say uh, like that okay okay any doubt surya girish krishna datta <coughs> no 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 it's clear